Well, Merry Christmas to all those listeners out there. And we do have some breaking news today. According to a report coming out of Reuters, it, uh, this being reported that Putin says that he is finally ready to negotiate. And here's what the article says. It says uh, Russia is ready to negotiate with all parties involved in the conflict in Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin said. I believe that we are acting in the right direction. We uh, are defending our nation, our national interest, the interest of our citizens, our people. And we have no other choice but to protect our citizens, Putin told state television in an interview. He further stated that uh, we are ready to negotiate with everyone involved about acceptable res- or solutions, but that is up to them. We are not the ones refusing to negotiate. They are. Of course, that's an interesting take by Mr. Putin since he's the one that started this war. And this sudden uh, change of heart may come from the report that uh, was just put out by the Star. And the headline is, is Terminally Ill Putin Being Kept Alive by Doctors to Finish Bloody War in Ukraine. And this is what the subtitle says. It says that uh, Vladimir Putin is being kept alive by foreign doctors but is dying of cancer. Uh, new reports out of Russia claim, with some predicting this is likely to be his last year in power. And the article further goes on to state that medics are using advanced Western treatments to uh, target the warmonger's cancer and stop it from spreading to the rest of his body. But the dictator is not likely to live to see another year, sources have told Ukrainian media. But the spokesperson said that... uh, Uh, Despite advanced treatment, the end is already in sight, even according to the doctors who are curating this treatment, because no medication can be endlessly successful. Of course, Vladimir Putin started out with um, colon cancer, but it spread uh, to other parts of his body, and uh, the side effects, according to this article, have included early symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And here's an interesting take on who may be the next successor. It says the, the spokesperson said that Putin is planning to pass the baton on to the Russian agricultural minister, Dmitry uh, Petrushka, who is also the son of top security aide Nikolai Petrushka. Now, unfortunately, it's uh, believed that he is also anti-Western world and is in favor of continuing the war in Ukraine. But the report also goes on to say that there is a tremendous amount of infighting as to who the next successor will be. So it will be difficult to say at this time if, in fact, if Putin will get his way. But getting back to the original story that I opened up with, this could be Vladimir Putin's uh, final chance to bring about peace. And don't count out the fact that this could be a part of a greater peace that the Bible speaks about in... uh, Daniel 9, 27, where, is, where, by, where the Bible says that Israel be, will be involved with a bunch of nations um, that will start off the seven-year tribulation period, which it will be a peace with many. And, you know, I've always believed that without the help of Russia, there would not be a peace with many. I think this could very well tie into the peace that is talked about in uh, Ezekiel 38, where it states that in the last day, the... Uh, Russian alliance of Russia, Turkey, and Iran, of course, a bunch of other lesser known states and terrorist groups will come down upon Israel's northern border, ready to destroy them. Well, the Bible makes it clear that during this time, in the last days, that Israel will be living in their own land in peace and safety. And at that time, many other nations around the world will question the motive behind Russia, Iran, and Turkey's bid to attack Israel. In in fact, it comes out in states that uh, basically Saudi Arabia would be one of the nations that would question why they're coming to attack uh, Israel. And you should also know that right now all three of these nations, Turkey, Iran, and Russia, are all cooperating in Syria so they don't get in each other's way and also how to coordinate if it does come down to uh, a military plan. And you should also not forget about the fact that Russia and China are also cooperating militarily at this time, and this simply does not bode well for Taiwan. But of course, this is is basically what the Bible has said, that there would be wars, and there'd be rumors of wars. And certainly there are rumors of wars that are developing, of course, between China and India. 
China and Japan, North Korea and South Korea, North Korea and Japan, the United States and North Korea. And the latest uh, that I think everybody's forgotten is that ISIS is still out there. And the United States is now stepping up operations against ISIS. And certainly there are smaller factions of wars going on throughout the world that will continue to go on. But if you do get my Gitter account, you know that I'm sending out all kinds of articles, not only on earthquakes on a daily basis, but also wars and rumors of wars and pestilence. There's a new pestilence that is now ravaging all of China. And it's being reported that as many as 250 million people in China have been infected with the COVID-19 virus and variants, and it doesn't look to be letting up anytime soon. And of course, the only thing that we see so far are the uh, pestilence that are affecting humans, but there's also a pestilence going around right now called bird flu that is ravaging the uh, egg and poultry uh, industry. So I wouldn't look to see the prices for eggs or poultry cut to come down anytime soon. In fact, you might see a sharp increase in prices. But as we go into the new year, I would be looking again at these four signs very keenly, and that is pestilence, wars and rumors of wars, and earthquakes. And the one sign that hasn't kicked in yet, to my uh, estimation, is famines. Yes, we do have scattered famines uh, in Africa and, and other isolated areas, but it hasn't gotten to the point to where I believe that we can still claim that famine is here. It's not here as of yet. But I was looking at an article coming out of the National Interest. You might want to read it. And the title of the article is The, ten, the Top 10 Global Risk of 2023. And I'll just give you the list. But I would definitely recommend that you go and take a look at it. And certainly risk number one is the poly crisis from the Ukraine war. But right coming in at number two is growing food insecurity. And you might as well just call that famine. And here's what they have to say. I'll go ahead and I'll read that part to you. It says the, food, uh, the World Food Program is highlighted, uh, has highlighted a ring of fire of hunger and malnutrition stretching across the globe from Central America to Haiti through North Africa and the Sable and Ghana, the Central African Republic and South Sudan, and then eastward to the Horn of Africa, Syria, Yemen, and extending to Pakistan and Afghanistan. The number of people facing acute food insecurity has soared from 135 million people to 345 million since 2019. Now here's something, here's what uh, they said about uh, Ukraine. It says, even if the war in Ukraine is resolved peacefully and future grain shipments from Ukraine are not in peril, food shortages will still exist. And of course, uh, global inflation is not helping things either, where we have soaring diesel fuel costs and also fertilizer costs. And here's something that's on the number three position of the list. It says upheaval and confronta confrontation with Iran. They see this as a very high probability in the near future. And if you've been keeping up with the Iran negotiations, you know that the President of the United States said that the Iran deal is basically dead. And it's also being reported that Iran is near the level to creating a nuclear weapon and will have both a delivery system and the bomb in less than two years, and they, they're not 100% on when that will take place. But with the new far-right government in Israel, and there seems to be a willing partner in the United States, a bombing mission in uh, Ukraine, I'm sorry, in Iran, could very well be taking place sooner than later. Now, frankly, as I look at Bible prophecy, I believe that there will be a peace solution that could solve all of, or most of, the world's problems as we see them right now. You know, as I look at 1 Thessalonians 5, where it says that much of the world will be saying, peace, peace, but in the end, sudden destruction will come. I believe that is talking about the seven-year peace accord that the world will get, but about the time that it starts, it will end and sudden destruction will take over. And you should also look at Revelation chapter 6, where it talks about the Antichrist coming in at the opening of the first seal, but by the time the second seal is broken, Peace is then taken from the earth, and I believe that's the time when the Antichrist will make his move. And in the power of Satan, he will take over the world. And this will likely take place somewhere around the midway point of the tribulation period. And don't think for a second that this will not be a supernatural battle, because it will. It will be so much of a supernatural battle that the Bible says that all the world will wonder after the beast, 
and will say who is able to stand against the beast and who is able to make war. In other words, they're basically saying there's no way the beast can be defeated in war. And in fact, that's what the Bible does say in uh, Daniel, 9, or Daniel 8, 23-25, where it t- talks about how destructive the Antichrist will be, and he will exalt himself to the point to where he'll actually try to go up against the uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but will easily be defeated at the second coming of Christ. So this is not just a normal war. This is going to be a supernatural war. But getting back to the articles at hand, I would definitely keep my eyes on where this peace process does head and see if it turns into a global peace accord. Certainly, the world is going to need Russia to be able to control many of Russia's allies, including Iran. Frankly, I do not believe that uh, Israel and the United States will end up attacking Iran's nuclear facilities. I think it will be resolved in this peace accord. And I would also keep an eye on wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, and famine. Because these are the converging signs that will be coming together just before this major peace accord takes place and the beginning of the tribulation period. And certainly, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, today isn't just a day that we celebrate Santa Claus. Today is a day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, whose ultimate mission was to die for the sins of the world. And he did get on that cross and he did uh, freely give his life for us that we might have eternal life. But you know, you can't have eternal life unless you accept that gift. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. He rose again, turned from your sin, and from this day forward, live for him. So I hope you'll make that decision today. And you that are Christians already, it appears that our time is short. The rapture of the church is about to take place. And you know that there are many in your family, friends that you have, are going to be left behind. But you can make an investment in their future. I would encourage you to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Make it a belated Christmas gift. Or call it whatever you can call it. But get get this in the hands of every lost loved one you, you have. In fact, I would buy multiple copies. And make sure that my family and friends had a copy at their disposal. And I hope you'll do that today. Just go down to the description section and make your decision there. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.